Now, because I'm recording, I don't want you to just think like you can't ask any questions. I want you to just forget that this is recording and I want you to be able to ask questions as, as we go or, um, <clears throat> or you can wait and ask them after I stop the recording. So if it, if it like really is what's going on, if it's a comment on what's going on up here, then totally ask it. If it's more of a formal like, hey, what do we do when, you know, at the end of your painting, then let's save that till, till after, you know what I mean? So we need to break this down visually. What did I have you do last time? Line, line what? Sketches. Sketches, yeah. yes. That is the first step to what's called an underpainting. And now, an underpainting is what we're going to put down here, put here first. It is exactly as it sounds. It is what's going to be underneath your painting, which implies that you will paint over it. Okay? That is a really healthy thing to think about when you're starting a painting. All the marks that I'm going to put in here, they're not permanent, okay? Um, <clears throat> so I need to look at major divisions. What's the focal point in this picture? The bird. The bird. What particular part of the bird? The head, the face, yes, for sure. Right here. We don't, we don't look at this and say, holy smokes, that is a really cool tail. You know, chicken nugget. That's his name. This is chicken nugget, everybody. Uh, <clears throat> no, he's a, he's a cardinal and it is a male. Um, <clears throat> so, right here, this is the most important part. What do we know about focal points? And how do we get people to look at the focus of the painting? By, um, what are they called? The lines? Like, trying to. Yes, leading lines that will lead you towards a focal point. Yes, and, and here we don't have a bunch of, we, we have like this line, which, which carries your eye from side to side, right? But right here, how does that get supported as a focal point? Severin? Contrast. Yes. If that's what you were all thinking, good job, okay? Contrast, the difference between light and dark. We want really bright and really dark next to our focal point. So there's a lot going on right here, and it makes your eye want to look there. So we want to get that in the right place, okay, here on the, on the canvas board. But then there's some other divisions that we, that we have. We've named this one, and we know that this is definitely part of, part of what we're going to draw in. Well, what else could you see that might make it? So like this division right here? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice job. <clears throat> now, if you go back and you watch both of these demos, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to link them both in the, in the announcement that I sends out. Did I send an announcement yesterday for painting? I sent, if I did, I sent one link. If I didn't, I think, I think I did too. What is the second demo? Yeah. Today is this. Today's the second one. So you can watch both of them and you can see the differences. Uh, but you guys have different answers than them, so they're going to be slightly different, and that's okay. There's n there's no one right way to paint a painting. There's something. There's certainly better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this bigger brush. This one is called a filbert, and what that is an indication of is the thickness of the of the brush, but then also the shape of the end. All right, this is curved. I like these ones because they allow me to make a big wide mark or I can make a very thin mark with the same brush, okay? To get started, I always like to get my brush wet. And when I do this in the water, there's something very particular I wanna, I wanna point out. If this is the bottom of my cup, okay? I'm not jamming the bristles like this, okay? That's no good. What I'm doing is I'm pushing them down like this, okay? And the reason why that's important is A, you want to take care of the bristles. You don't want to just abuse the thing. It's not a chisel, okay? You want to push it and you're gonna just push the moisture, the water, chemicals, you're gonna push it through the bristles, all right? 
<clears throat> so getting it wet like this makes it so that paint doesn't get inside the bristles and dry out faster. It makes it so it's easier to clean. <clears throat> now there is occasionally some times when I want to use a dry, a, a perfectly dry brush and we'll get to that point in this painting. Um, but you don't want dry paint to get up inside here. This metal part right here is called the ferrule, like Will Ferrell. Okay, that's, every, that's what I think about every time I hear his name. It's like, oh, Will Paintbrush. No, I'm joking. But this right here, this metal thing is called the ferrule. And if you get paint up inside the ferrule, that's like a death sentence to the brush. Okay? So let me show you what happens if you don't clean your brush properly. Maybe. There he is. There's a lot of dead brushes in that cupboard. See this? Yeah. Looks fine going this way, but you see how, how wide it is like this? That's never ever going to lay flat again because there's too much. You can feel it right in there. There's dry paint like crazy in there. Okay? Like and it's. One? Nope, nope, that one's okay. <clears throat> That one will, will do that uh, naturally. But when we clean the brushes, when I show you that part of the demo, uh, it won't be recorded, but uh, I'll show you how you can train your brushes to, be, to lay real, real nice. So you see this, it's ready to go. The palette lid, okay? Some of you may have a little bit that's touching the lid. You want to clean that out so that if you flip this around 80, 180 degrees and put it back down, you're not contaminating other colors. Okay, so we want to clean this out every time you use it. Um, but what we're doing here, and so this is this is me. So if you want, you can put your, the lid back on your paint so that you know they don't dry out. <clears throat> but what I'm going to do here, if I've if I've not said it before, this area here. On this palette, if this had watercolors in it, you could totally mix in this area. But what we found over time is that this section here is incredibly difficult to clean out efficiently with the paints in here still, okay? And it's much easier to mix in the lid. I don't know if I've said that before, but I will say it again. Mix in the lid, don't mix in your palette itself. Because this, you can scrub it out and rinse it out and not worry about anything on this, in the sink, okay? I don't want emails about that, oh, Mr. Hilliard, my, my child totally screwed up the kitchen sink with oil paint for, and why are you, blah, blah, blah. Take care of your space at home. Don't leave any trace that you were there with a bunch of paint, okay? Don't run paint down the sink. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to make a nice dark color. Okay, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to get some burnt sienna, just like this. And I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to put it right here. All right, and you start to see that color. All right, you're like, oh, that's so, so exciting. Then I'm going to come over here to these blues. You see this really bright blue here? Come right next door, the other side of this empty thing right here. This one here is called cobalt blue. And... <clears throat> If I want to be really careful with Sam's paints, I'm going to clean my brush out so that I don't put brown in the in the blue. And I'm going to get okay, an equal portion of that on my brush right here. And I'm going to bring this right here. Now this is what's called mechanical mixing. You're just actually stirring them together. Well. That turned pretty darn dark pretty fast. That is absolutely what you're looking for. Okay? So you've got this really dark color, and it is full of color. And see how my brush is really starting to get loaded up. All right? <clears throat> so this, this color here is what I want to use to draw the first portion of my underpainting. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come and get a little bit of turpenoid. Okay? I'll just get this on my brush and I'll put it here and you'll see, you see how quickly it starts to thin it out. This is going to make my paint go further. 
And you have to work it a little bit because you want to get it through the paint that's in your brush. You see how much more smooth? I don't know if you can see that at all. Can you see that? Yeah. You can see how it's much more, it's starting to, it's starting to loosen up. See if I can put it on kind of an angle and you can see maybe you can see how much how much more smooth that is yeah. <clears throat> we're not quite there yet you see how that's starting to become a lot more like ink it's very thin this will actually help it to dry a little bit faster too okay. so you can kind of see what's going on I've got quite a bit of paint to work with here so what I'm doing here is just kind of pushing it out of the bristles. And this call, this this activity, you know, some of you have brushes that are still pretty clean. This will stain them and that's okay as long as you clean them out good. Uh, the stain will stay, but as long as they're as they stay soft, the bristles, then you're totally 100% good. So, I've got my brush all loaded up. I want to look at major divisions up here. What's the biggest major division that you can see? This, mm -hmm. we can see, we can put that in. It's about two thirds, okay? Can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. Maybe just a hair to the side. So I'm just gonna make a mark right here. This is gonna kind of jog over here like this and come back over here like this. You're like, oh, we're going in the right direction now. Oh my gosh, what's going on? What's the next major division you can see? The stick. The stick. So it starts up here, it kind of comes down here like this, and then just kind of comes across. I'm gonna ask you kind of a, it's gonna sound like a trick question, but I just want you to really genuinely think through it. <clears throat> and before I ask the question, I want you to understand, we've established that the bird, the picture is about the bird. Yes. It's not about the stick, but we get, especially when we're trying to learn how to do something, we get really caught up in the idea of that it needs to be exactly perfect. Is there some stick police that's coming around and saying, guess what, you didn't paint that stick correctly? I'm gonna report you to the, I don't know, whoever people. No, it's just a stick. <laughs> It doesn't matter. I don't know how I can say that with any more enthusiasm. It genuinely doesn't matter. Now, if your goal is to do photorealism, I have some news for you. It's not gonna happen on your first painting. It's probably not gonna happen on your second one. I had a really brutally honest mentor once upon a time. I was painting in his house and he says, the sooner you can get done with the first 500 paintings, the sooner you can get to that first painting that's good. I'm like, oh, great. Yeah, that's very motivating. Thank you for nothing. Okay. What you're telling me is my first 500 paintings are going to suck? Well, no. Your first painting could be beautiful. Your first painting could be a disaster. I don't care. I want you to have zero stress going into this. You're just learning how to, some of this is the first time you've ever touched oil paint. As long as you try and you follow these steps generally, you'll be fine. And I want you to enjoy it. Have fun with it. If you're not having fun, put the brush down and go walk around the block with the dog for a minute, okay? And then come back to it. If you don't have a dog, go borrow your neighbor's dog. No, I don't know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but. Um, we're not worried about it. It just doesn't matter. It's a stick. Let's get over it. This is marks here that just don't matter. Now, the bird. His head is pretty well kind of right in the middle, but it's got some, some asymmetric balance, which helps to balance it out. But we're going to put his head like here-ish. His body is like here. 
just basic shapes. If I put that mark down and I'm like, oh shoot, that's in the wrong spot, can I move it? Can't move it, you can draw it again. And you're like, well, what if it just turns into a big grayish dark blob? Well, any other class, any other assignment, just get a different color. It's all good. I had one painting that I did an under I did an underpainting with my, you know, kind of burnt sienna kind of color. And it didn't go well. So I went and got blue and started over. And it worked great. Because remember, you're going to paint over all this. You have to let go of it before you even get started. You say, do you know what? It doesn't matter what this turns into. That's the best painting psychology I can give you. It just doesn't matter what it turns into. Okay? The quicker you can get to that idea, the more freedom you'll have with the brush. Do you have a question, Xander? Uh, so this is like with the sketch, you're not trying to get every turn? Or... Absolutely. Good point. Leaving the details out, this is just something to hold the space. Okay? I got a tail that comes down here like this. That is absolutely not what that tail looks like. And you notice I didn't put the beak in? I know where it is. I don't need, you know, it's like, oh, well, where's its eye going to live? I don't care. It doesn't matter right now. I could put more stuff in. I almost asked you, what more should I do? The answer is nothing. The underpainting is done. Now we can start adding to it. So here is, I'm going to put this brush somewhere else before I try and use it. So now, the next step, and this is the part that you're going to want to really grab a hold of and remember, we work from dark values to light. That's the purpose of this assignment, is value. It's not about color at all. It's about making dark shades and bright whites and knowing where to put them, okay? So I need to put the darkest stuff in first. So I'm gonna clean my brush because the stuff that's in my brush is really thinned down and it's, it's, it's got a lot of uh, terpenoid in it. And when I put a whole bunch of that down, sometimes the next layer doesn't have, it has a hard time sticking. More on that in a minute. <clears throat> but what I'm gonna do, I do want a little bit of it but not a whole bunch. So this is where I was mixing to get that really thin paint that I used to draw with. And if your paint is not making nice marks like this, okay, where you're getting a lot of the canvas texture and it's just not, you're kind of fighting it, add a little more uh, terpenoid to it, okay? Um, and be aware of where paint is. You see how I just I just scratched my, my eye with my little pinky finger, right? Did I ever tell you the story about the kid named Nate in my high school painting class? No. Oh, it's a spectacular story. You are Nate. I know, I know. But <laughs> it, it's a different Nate, thankfully. This is not one of those, you know, asking for a friend kind of moments. Okay, this is not a story about me. But <clears throat> while I'm while I'm painting here, some of this darks. I'll tell you this story. So there's this thing. So I'm just putting in the darks here. The there's a little bit in here, but not a lot. Um, what, Xander? Yep. Yep. The clear one. Okay. Yep. So. <clears throat> A lot of times, and hopefully you'll be able to experience this, and so I'm just working this into the canvas, okay? I'm not worried about anything else but getting rid of the white, okay? And this is where you just dive in. And I'm actually gonna mix up more paint because I need it. Um, <clears throat> you'll really get in the zone. You start to, you start to think, okay, this is pretty cool, and time will absolutely melt. When you're in class, you're gonna get set up, you're gonna paint for like what feels like three brush strokes, and I'm gonna say, okay, time to clean up, and you're gonna be like, I hate you right now, because I wanna paint forever. You know, this class could be three hours long, and more than half of you would still say, 
this class is too short, okay? When I was in college, my painting class was four and a half hours twice a week. It was kind of intense. So you see how my paint isn't flowing real great? It's really kind of thick. I can sit and fuss with it, which I'm going to, but later on when I need it to be a little more, a uh, little less labor intensive to get it to lay down, I will add a little bit of terpenoid to it to get it to flow. Let me do that actually. But anyway, this kid, we're sitting in class and he is in the zone. Everything has disappeared. It's called flow. How many have ever heard that before? It's, it's sometimes a common term that's so you're just you're just in the zone. Everything that matters is just right in front of you and nothing else is in just Nothing else matters. Hang on. I've totally painted over this part of the stick right here, right? How many of you saw that and you were like, ah, what are you doing? Yeah. Little red flag, Mr. Hilliard, what's, what's the deal? So I know where that stick is gonna come through. It comes right underneath where the body meets the tail. I'm good, okay? I'm not gonna lose it over here because this is light. I'll be fine, okay? So he's painting and we're, you know, me and my buddies are sitting behind him and he's one of our buddies too. And, and we're sitting behind him and, and uh, he's painting and we notice that he's just kind of passively, we notice that he is itching his ear. It's like I just kind of rub my eye like that, right? Well, he knows that he's got pain on his hands, so he's like not using his hands to fix this itch in his ear. So he turned his brush around, okay? And he, it didn't hurt him. Okay. It didn't hurt him, he's fine. But he's in here, you know, you just get one of those itches that just you just have to get after it, you know? It's just like, oh, it feels so good, right? That was what he was experiencing in that moment. He had his, his brush in here and he was just like getting after it kind of like a bear rubbing up against a tree you know you've seen it except for we're watching this go down and we're we're trying to get his attention but he's totally zoned into his painting we're like uh nate time out stop stop he had the most amazing color blue on the bristle end of his brush it's called phthalo blue phthalo blue does not stop i don't give it to you for a reason okay it just goes everywhere all the time and it stays there forever okay it's just intense and he's itching and we're trying to get him to stop because what he doesn't realize is that he thinks that this end of this is in his ear but oh, it's this end oh. and he's like oh yeah this is great and it's sloshing around in his head okay and we're like uh nate stop stop come out and he's he's this blue everywhere how long did it stay in? Two weeks. He looked like Blue Man Group for two weeks. He had blue in places that he didn't even know he had. And it was the most amazing thing. So that's the story that's going to help you remember that, blue, that paint, you can't feel it because it's so smooth. Okay? And if you get it on you, it's going to go, it just, it just spontaneously jumps to things. So be careful. Okay? Especially when you're going to go sit on your mom's couch and just after you've been done painting and then mom's couch is like technicolor. I'm not really worried about this section because that's going to get lighter. So I'm, I know I'm going to be visiting that again. So now let's work into this lighter stuff up here. I'm going to put a little bit of dark right up here. You're like, yeah, that's gorgeous, Mr. Hilliard. Okay. This is the underpainting, remember? Mm -hmm. I'm just establishing darks and lights. Um, so yeah. Is this, is this uh, step supposed to have less terpenoids than the... It'll be different with every painting. So those, those questions that you have about how much and when, it'll change with every painting. So you just have to get a feel for it with your painting. So okay. I just use the same paint with the terpenoids? Mm -hmm. Yep. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of white 
and I'm going to bring it in here. That's actually a lot of white, but it's all good. Remember, we're working dark to light, and this is actually really thick, so I'm going to get some terpenoid here. It starts to thin it up. And we'll start to put this in here. Now this isn't quite as light as it is, but remember we're we're working towards light. We don't want to go 100% the whole way right at first. Uh huh. That's going to be very last because we don't want to put the real bright whites in until the very end. Because remember, we work dark to light. So those details are also last. All right? So I've got all of the canvas in the background covered. All right? Now I'm going to take my other brush. It's clean and it's dry. And I'm going to very lightly come in here and we're going to blend. And what's going to happen is it's mixing with the colors that are already down. And I'm going to blend it and then I'm going to stop. Because the more I touch it, the more the blending turns into too much the same. So now you see how that's nice and soft? Stop. Once you get it, stop. Okay. This needs to be a soft edge going down through here too. Okay, so I'm just going to do like little cross hatchy kind of things here. Now, I'm going to say something here, and it's my opinion. It's, not, it's neither right nor is it wrong. It is my opinion. And I don't want you to adopt it just because it's my opinion. And so I want Mr. Hilliard to think that my paintings are great. I'm going to think they're great anyway. Okay. <clears throat> but I like to see paintings for myself that where I can see the brush strokes. I like to see the process. That's engaging to me. It always has been. If you want to be a photorealist, absolutely go for it. And I'm working in some of these lighters, lighter values, and it's going to mix in with the colors that are down below. I've got too hard of a line right here. So I'm going to clean my brush because there's too much going on in there. I'm going to get this lighter color and come back in right here. Kind of soften that edge. What is the background in this picture? <laughs> yeah, it's just blurry. It's not actually a thing, right? We don't know what it is. So let's make sure that that's the case. So with the dark to light, you did the dark and then the light and then the gray. Good observation. So I am moving a little bit dark here because I've noticed that this isn't quite dark enough. And that's okay. There's no like, you know, no going back kind of moment. Okay. Definitely the best painting I've ever done. <laughs> Beautiful. I know, right? I just have to get done with it in like 10 minutes. Yeah. So no big deal, right? So you may get a little less play-by-play. -play, and I'm going to focus a little more. But you'll have the video before the day is through. I may have to upload it once I get home. Uh, but... Just pushing some of these darks. All right, so that's not horrible. And what's kind of interesting I've found with paintings is we only ever just see the end product. We don't ever see the process. And so sometimes it's hard to kind of trust 
that you're going in the right direction. And that can be kind of hard. And the only way to, to learn that is by doing it. So don't get down on yourself if you think, man, I feel like I'm drowning. You'll be okay. I don't want any like real harsh lines, so I'm just being careful here. And I think that that's, that's okay. There's some harder lines in here that are showing up on the camera a little more than what are seeing what I'm seeing here. Um, but still, okay. So the background's done. Even though the background has some pretty heavy lights, pretty, pretty bright lights down here, there is still going to be some brighter. So I'm going to mix up even more white, and I'm going to start to put it in here, and I'm just going to go a little bit, a little bit brighter. Now, something you need to understand about, well, another reason why going light to dark, or dark to light, excuse me, matters. If I had this side of the painting was perfectly white, like brand new brush, brand new paint, nothing else is even remotely an option, white paint, and over here is black paint, okay? And you can mix the brown and the blue together to make the black, okay? If I took two brushes that had those two colors in and I switched, I switched them and made marks, one over here and one over here, the dark paintbrush coming over to the light, if I made a brush stroke, probably 80% of the color that, that would come off the canvas and I would have white paint on my brush. And I'd have maybe just a tiny bit of black over here in the white. But my white brush over here to the black, you'd have a much bigger white presence because the white sticks to the dark. The dark doesn't stick to the light. You're like, well, what is the, what's the difference? It's a, it just makes a difference. If you've got light, dark down, the white will stick to it much easier. The the black down, then the white, it goes much better that way. Just opposite, white down and then put darks on top, it doesn't stick as well. Now, the question that I usually get in this part of this discussion, of all of you Bob Ross fans, and I'll be honest with you, I was once one of them. Not that I'm not now, I appreciate the man, okay? But he would do something on nine tenths of his paintings at the very beginning, he would say, I've painted this whole canvas white. Well, it's just opposite of what I just told you, and his paintings seem to turn out okay, so what's your problem, Mr. Hilliard? Well, he has chemically altered that first layer and subsequent layers after that to make it so that he can do a painting in half an hour or one hour, and that's what all of his paintings are. This is the traditional way to do it with traditional water or oil paints that are going to make it so that you're going to be more successful over time. So just trust me on that, okay? <clears throat> now I'm going to go just a little bit brighter. This is still a broken white, which means it's got a little bit of something else going on in it. It's not pure white, okay? You see how the white is sticking, but the more I blend it, the more it disappears. I don't want to get rid of all of it, but I want to soften that edge. I got a lot going on in my brush, so I'm kind of need to get rid of it. Does anybody have me for another class tomorrow? You mean Thursday? Tomorrow. Um, I have a student observer coming from Utah State, and she gets to she's going to be here, and I'm very excited because she's actually a former teacher, former student of mine 
that's going to be an art teacher and that's like just on my brain and so I'm excited for that she's she's very excited to come and uh, she's actually she's gonna totally kill me for saying this but I'm gonna say it when she's here but that ballerina painting or drawing up there a charcoal drawing she did that one and I'm pretty sure she doesn't know it's hanging there so that's gonna be funny tomorrow all right so there's that we're gonna crank out this bird something lightning fast and there's no guarantee as to how it's going to turn out. I just get so excited talking to you guys. That... So I'm going to clean my brush. We need to put... So let's think about this for a second. There are ways around both options to this answer, but what are we going to put in next? I want you to really think. I want you to look at the reference. What are we going to put in next? The background's pretty well done. So the stick is one answer. What's another answer? There you go. Those are the two options. Sam, what's your argument for the for the stick? Oh, I was changing my argument for the tail first. I, mean, <laughs> I forgot about the tail for a second. Like, like, uh, you could just keep... Okay, Severin, you said tail first. Yeah. Why? You what? Well, you're right. Why are you right? I want to see if you can come up with it before I bail out and. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Is that what you're all thinking? There is an exception to what we're doing. Good old Bob, he works inevitably every single time he paints. Back to front, top to bottom. That's how he paints every single one of his pictures. And if you get stuck on that, then you run into the dark paint and light paint not sticking to one another, and it turns into a very frustrating moment. Okay? So there's exceptions. You just have to be careful with them. Just like there's a tree and a sky behind. Okay? Like, where's Mr. Laser? Like this painting right here, up here. That tree is definitely darker than the sky. Did I paint the tree first or the sky first? It's kind of a tricky, tricky thing. I put the value in the dark and the tree in my underpainting, but I finished the sky before I went and put the detail in the tree. So there's an exception. The last thing you wanna do is to paint the sky around a tree. The sky doesn't go around trees. The sky is behind. So it makes sense to put the sky in first. That's why we put the, the light behind the dark stick. But you just have to understand how to manipulate the paint so that it will stick. Does that make sense? You see where all these pieces are kind of falling into place? You'll get there. You'll get there. So now let's put the dark of the tail in. Okay. And I got the wrong brush. Oh, and by the way, don't ever, ever, ever leave your brushes in the water. If you do this, I will hunt you down and lecture you for hours and hours at your kitchen table. You don't want that. And I don't, just whatever makes you uncomfortable, okay? Because this will dissolve the glue that's holding this ferrule on and your whole brush will explode and fall apart. If you're not using it, just lay it across your water like this and it's perfectly good. Or find another place for it, but don't leave it in the water. The, the just bad things will happen, okay? The bad things are you, you will happen. You <laughs> I will, I will yell at you. I will yell at you so loud that You'll hear my voice for the next two weeks. <laughs> if you leave your brush in the water here in class, I will yell at you from across the room so that everybody else can hear. So there. Even if you get up in their face, everyone will be able to hear. 
And you guys will probably just have a hard time keeping a straight face, because let's be honest, I don't yell. You're not, you're not very scary. I'm not very scary, as hard as I try. You know. Okay, okay I'm going to put this dark in here, where this tail is. And I'm not worried about leaving any, leaving the whites or not, okay? But what I am going to do is just put a little bit of the detail in. Doesn't have to be very bright. And how I've loaded this brush, I'll put it right here so you can see it. See how that, that brush is real sharp, like that? Come in here, very light pressure. Awesome. I'm moving along. Oh my gosh. Okay, we're going warp speed here. I have to turn my te the teacher part of my brain off. I just have to paint. It's somewhat torturous. Okay. Now I need to put the stick in. So I'm just going to put some dark in here. It's got terpenoid in it so that it will float. Terpenoid and a little bit of oil. Oh, Xander, come on. Okay, here it is. Ta-da. There it is. Yay. You're right. It's, it's a good thing to see. All right. So I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to bring it straight across. Fantastic. I'm going to come over here and get some lighter values. Remember, there's no stick police. What? Dang. Oh. Uh, you're putting light on dark. Is that Because it'll float. There's a little stick that sticks up here, and there's another stick that comes over here. And if I want to break it up, I just touch it a few more times. Okay. Look, it's a stick. Okay, moving on. Just so it's not like dark stripe, light stripe. I just want to break it up. All right. So now I need to put the darks in the body of the bird. So his face is dark here. There's a dark wing here. Yep. Because I still have to teach you how to clean your brushes and I have 10 minutes. Oh, baby. <clears throat> but I want to clean, I want to finish this, this painting for you too. So I get a lighter color, lighter value. I'm going to put his crest in here. It's the top of his head. Let's see if I can get it in the right place. I have a friend who's a genuine ornithologist. He's a bird scientist, and he, I used to work with him at a sporting goods store, and he was always correcting me. <laughs> it's not what that is. I don't care, bird brain. But sometimes it sticks. Alright, 
Let's see if we can get his beak in here. You look like a potato. I'm having a hard time getting the dark to stick. <clears throat> it's starting to look like a bird. Sort of. Yep. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> oh, forget his feet. Good stuff. I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to put his feet in with any sort of success. There's no highlights on there. So his feet, they're just going to be like shadows here, and it's not sticking. Well, there's, there's your feet. There's some. It's a highlighter, too. And the dot of light on his eye right there. All of a sudden, the bird has come to life. We need to have a little, a bright highlight on his beak to give it contrast, which makes it so that it's a stronger focal point. We need a clean brush. We're going to use straight white. We're going to see how that works. I have to like hold my breath and not stick my head in the way. Yeah, not going to touch it again. <laughs> if I do, it's going to go south real fast and not the way that migratory birds do. Um, <clears throat> okay, uh, there's a painting. Ta-da. Yeah, thank you.